Hi everyone, welcome back to another video in the Web Security Academy series. In today's lab, we'll be using a union-based SQL injection attack in order to retrieve all the usernames and passwords of the users of the application. All right, let's get started. This lab contains a SQL injection vulnerability in the product category filter. Got SQL injection. And that's in the product category filter. The results from the query are returned in the application's response, so you can use a union attack to retrieve data from other tables. To construct such an attack, you need to combine some of the techniques you learned in the previous labs. The database contains a different table called users with columns called username and password. To solve the lab, perform a SQL injection union attack that retrieves all usernames and passwords and use this information to log in as the administrator user. Our end goal over here is to output the usernames and passwords in the users table and log in as the administrator user. Okay, let's access the lab. So while the lab spins up, I'm going to create an analysis section. And just like we discussed in the previous lab, there are two steps that you need to perform before you can actually output data on the page. And the first one is you need to determine the number of columns that the vulnerable query is using. The second thing is you need to determine the data type of the columns. Okay. Going back to the application, we said that it's the product category filter that is vulnerable. So if we hit gifts, you see in the URL, there's a parameter called category, and that's our vulnerable field. You can confirm that by just putting a single quote, which is a SQL character that results in an internal server error because it resulted in a syntax error in the database, which resulted in an internal server error in the application. So this is our vulnerable field. Now we need to determine the number of columns that are being used in the query that filters based on category. And we said the way to do that is to use the order by clause and to iteratively order by each column until we get an internal server error. Now, when we get an internal server error, that means we're trying to order by a column that does not exist. And that's why the number of columns that the query is using would be that column that we're ordering by minus one. So let's start off with ordering by one. This should work because I know for sure that the application is at least using two columns, one for the title, so snow delivered to your door, and one for the description. So those are the ones that I can see on the page, but it's possible that there is more that are not outputted on the page. Let's hit enter and we get an error. And the reason is because we didn't comment out the rest of the query. Let's try that again. Here we go. It looks like it's ordering by the title. So you see over here, it starts with C and then moves on to H, S and so on. Okay, so we have at least one column. Now let's try ordering by two. And we don't get an internal server error. So I think what it's doing, it's ordering by the second column, which is this one over here. And you'll see over here, it starts off with an A. Second one is a B and so on. Okay, now let's order by the third column. And we get an internal server error. which means that the number of columns is 
3 minus 1. So we know that there is two columns. The next step is to determine the data type of the columns. We're thinking there is the query is something similar to this. So select A, B from maybe products table where category. Now, in order to determine the data type, we said in the previous lab, the way to do that is to add union statement. So we're closing off this quote over here. And then iteratively add select null statements with a string value in each column until we hit an error. So let's try with the first column. Now I have only two columns over here because I already know that there's two columns based on my first step. Let's see if this gives us an error. If it does, that means that this column does not accept data type ring. Okay. You could see over here that we output the character A. And so the first column, which is the title column, accepts the string value. Okay, let's try the second one. And we also don't get an error for this one. And so you'll see it over here, A and A. And what that means is that both columns are of data type string. That means if I want to output data from other tables in the database, I can use both these columns. And the end goal for this exercise was to output the usernames and passwords in the users table and log in as the administrator user. So to do that, I'm going to use a union query again and say select the username field and the password field from the users table. And then comment out the rest of the query. Now, the reason I can do this is because one, the number of columns in this query is equal to the number of columns in the original query over here. And so this works. If I was only able to find one column over here that is outputted on the page or only one column that has a data type string, then I would have to output each column on its own and then output the second column because the page only allows me to output one column at a time. Or what I could do is try to concatenate the result of two columns together so that they're outputted on a single column. And that's something that we'll learn in the next lab because you will come across situations where the page only displays one column of data type text. And so you have to work with that column. But in this case, it's easy. You only need to output two columns and it just so happens that the page has two columns that are of uh, data type text. And so it works. Let's copy that. Put it over here, hit enter, and here we go. So you could see over here it outputted the username Carlos and then the password of Carlos. Same goes for this user and this one over here. So this one's the one that we're interested in. So administrator and the password of administrator. I'm going to copy that. Put it over here and then log in as the user. Let's see if we can log in. Here we go. It says, congratulations, you solved the exercise. If you would like to see a detailed version of the video where we both exploit the vulnerability manually and then script it in Python, check out the video linked on the screen. Also make sure to hit the subscribe and share button so that the video reaches a wider audience. Thank you and see you in the next video.